Hello, hello, hello. I am Minister Shonda Tucker. This is, I believe, our third hour. <laughs> our third hour of prayer. The first hour we were focused on taking our authority. Second hour was focused on healing. This hour we're going to focus on relationships. And I know that the next hour, the 3 o'clock hour, is going to be um, really what we initially thought that this whole thing would be about, taking authority and uh, pulling down strongholds and um, demonic forces, uh, mass shootings, canceling, all those things and all of that foolery. So we're just going to draw a bloodline around your city. So that's going to happen at... Uh, the three o'clock hour specifically, but this particular hour is focused on um, relationships. Um, I have on, I told y'all I'm changing my shirt <laughs> every hour because that's what the Lord said to do um, so that you know which video is about what. But this is the t shirt that um, my husband and I wore on our wedding day when we went to our reception and we also wore it on our honeymoon and it just mine just says wifey established 10 24 21 um but not just uh, marriage relationships i know that's a huge one or just relationships with significant others but also relationships with family um we're going to talk about that specifically the lord had me go grab the flurry of activity between these <laughs> <laughs> these sessions is funny but the lord had me to go and grab this bible uh it's a very lovely bible it it looks new because it is fairly new um it is a gift that our pastors gave us um it's called the family life marriage bible and it's just presented to al and shonda tucker from pastor kevin and kendra blanton so it was one of our wedding gifts so um i use it uh quite frequently because it has um has all kinds of like little devotionals in the margin uh, throughout it. Um, this one that I open, <laughs> open the book to says, um, it says Second Chronicles is the, the passage of scripture, but it says romance FAQ. My husband just made a big mistake. How should I handle it? So that's one of the questions. Um, and then it has intimate moments, create your own uh, drive in and just all kinds of little great things. I'm sure she, they got it from some marriage conference or something, but it is wonderful. And it, I, and we're not trying to sell nothing. I'm not trying to promote anything. I'm just trying to show you that I have tools for whatever it is I'm trying to do. When we were talking about healing, this is my go-to healing book, Healing Starts Now by Joan Hunter. Um, when I am praying um, about healing specifically, uh, I grab my brother's uh, study application Bible. But this, uh, when I'm dealing with things with relationships or just trying to think of intimacy God's way, I grab this uh, particular Bible, but it's just called the Family Life Marriage Bible. So none of this stuff is stuff that we're, we're selling. But anyway, um, so what the Lord gave me to talk about as far as relationships are concerned is... The number one relationship, I think I've had it on my page for some time, is my number one goal is to please God in everything. God is described as a jealous God. And if he gives you a gift and you want the gift more than you want the giver, then that becomes a problem. Okay? So relationships are a gift um, friendships uh, sisterhood um, people come into my life who are like family to me so of course I have bloodline family but then I have people that God just divinely connects me with that are like family and so all of those connections and relationships are gifts from God. Now, some relationships, we just go create ourselves. She seems like she's nice. I'm going to make her my friend because I like her hair. 
Mm. Or he seems like he he could take care of some stuff. So let, let me let me call him see how he's doing. Okay, those didn't come from the Lord, but when those go to heck in a handbasket, we ready to to <laughs> to be mad at the Lord. But we have got to keep God at the center of all of our relationships. I mean the center, I mean the head, I mean the main focus. Because if we don't, we begin to focus on the relationship more than we focus on um, our relationship with God. And, and we want God to be the center. If you are desiring to get married or to be in a covenant relationship, that's great. And we can definitely pray. But we need to first invite Christ into your life and to make sure that you allow him to choose. That it's not what you want. It's not he's got to be this tall. She's got to be this size. He's got to have this job. She's got to do whatever. Because God is a great father and a wonderful father knows his children and anticipates anticipates what they need. By the time I met my husband, I was at a place where I was like, God, I want what you want for me. That was my prayer because I had tried it my way and I had gone after what I thought was a good idea and seemed like I could work with it. But when I got to the baseline, I wasn't even asking to be married anymore. My pastor, in her loving way, corrected me and said, stop saying that you're not going to get married again because um, if that's God's will for your life and you're speaking negatively or you're speaking against it, you're not allowing him to have his perfect will. So that's number one is I want God's perfect will for my life. And when he began to bring my husband in my life, I thought I knew him because we went to school together and the Lord said, you don't know him. You, you know of him, but let me introduce you to him who I have created him to be because he's been he's been working with me. He he's he's been trusting me. He's been walking with me. Now let me introduce him to you now that he's ready to meet you. And and now that I was ready to meet him. And so I'm spending a lot of time on this because a lot of times we get mad at God about things that we never involved him in. Then when it's a mess, we just like, help. <laughs> He's like, I didn't tell you to go over there anyway. Your relationships with your family of origin. God knew specifically where he was placing you and how you would grow and, and what would happen. He was with you the whole entire time. You can love those people who are your family of origin, but that doesn't mean you have to be intimately connected with them every single day and call everybody every day and make sure all your cousins good and your great aunt and everybody. Hmm. Ask the Lord because there are some familiar spirits that are associated when you're around family. So ask the Lord and he, God is so strategic about placing people in your life. If you need a mother figure, God will place a woman of God in your life to be that for you. A father figure, he'll place that in your life. He, he'll just have people that speak life over you and that nurture you and help you grow. Again, he is a good father and he wants you to have blessings. And sometimes we get so focused on, I want a husband, I want a husband, I want a wife, I want a wife, I want a wife, because we think that's going to fix everything. Uh-uh. <laughs> what what happens is there are two people who are learning to coexist and to honor God with their relationship. It is work. It's good work. It's productive work. But marriages done God's way are work. And you have got to keep um, him at the center of that relationship. The Lord said, um, with my husband and I were reading a devotional, a marriage devotional. And um, the Lord said that our relationship with him is twofold, that we are his children, so he is our father, but he's also our father-in-law, that he is the father of the person that we're married to, and, and any good father-in-law wants you to treat their child right, right? So it, it was, it just, my husband and I were blown away by that, because it was like, oh gosh, that's so good, because 
the Lord tells me all the time, where is grace for him? Where is grace for my child? He's my child. Give him grace. So um, when you're dealing with your mom or your aunties or your cousins or whoever that may not always be the nicest, kindest person or they think that they know you and don't really handle you the way that they should, grow in grace. Give them grace and realize that God is strategic about the relationships that he wants you in, okay? So we're just going to pray about being open, being open to the relationships that God wants us to have. Some relationships, we've been friends, partners with people for a long time, but um, it's just kind of like being on a crowded crowded elevator we may all start off in the lobby but at some point ding, this your floor you got to get off <laughs> it was nice kicking it with you <laughs> up to, to floor three but this your floor you get off we wave by and then I stay on because I'm going higher so it doesn't mean that something wrong with floor three. It just means that that's not my destination. I'm going to go higher. And so if the Lord is taking you higher, you have to, you don't get off the elevator and just stand there and be like, stand there and look, because you're never going to get to your floor if you stay there. You you got to say bye-bye. I'll see you later. See ya. And then stay on there and go to where, where the Lord is taking you to your destination. Doesn't mean they're a bad person. It's just... We're going in two different directions, right? We, go, we have destinations that are not the same. And so be mindful of that. Some people come just for a season. So, um, anything else, God? Mm, relationships with siblings. Um, we often say, that's my sister, that's my brother. Um, most of the time is when we say it in the body of Christ, we mean like our sister or our brother in Christ because we're all one family, right? Okay, but sometimes how you treat your siblings or depending on like what your birth order is and how you were treated growing up, your idea of siblings may be a little misconstrued. Um, you may think that siblings are bossy. You may think that siblings are... Um, babies. You may think that siblings are, are coming to get a piece of your pie, and so that means you have less or whatever, so you don't share nicely. If you are an only child, um, the way you view the world is complete. <laughs> it's complete. I love only children that gave birth to one. Thank you very much. Um, uh, <laughs> I love how they see the world, but they're a little uh, different in how they see things. So sometimes we bring that mindset to our relationship with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. So if you're the bossy sibling, you're used to telling your brothers and sisters what they're going to do and then they do it because they don't want to get in trouble. Or if you're the baby sister or the baby brother, you're used to they're going to take over anyway, so let them do what they do. So that's how you deal with your brothers and sisters in Christ. You're an only child, you you up here right under the parents. You like a junior parent. <laughs> Setting rules, <laughs> doing your own thing and, and counting your money that you usually have a lot of because everybody was spoiling you. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> so when you deal with brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, you come in with the same energy. So ask the Lord to teach you. The Lord says that we can ask for wisdom and he will not make us ashamed. In the area of relationships, we are going to embrace the fact that we may need to be retrained by the Lord. We may need wisdom and how to be a good partner, a good wife, a good mother, a good sister, a good brother, a good family member, a good auntie, good uncle. Um, God's way and not just what we saw <laughs> growing up because that could be a little bit off. And so we're going to invite God into our relationships. And uh, to my side, I love only children. Stop it. <laughs> and, and we're going to invite God into um, our relationships. And I'm going to say one more thing about only children again because I gave birth to one. Sometimes... And I feel the presence of the Lord. Sometimes the way that we parent them um, is a little different because they are our only child and it's like precious cargo. And so we keep um, 
a serious mama bear hedge of protection around them that we don't want anybody or anything to get to them. And sometimes we, we do them a disservice because we keep their feet from hitting the floor because we want to carry them through life. And I am having to ask the Lord to teach me how to parent. Um, I have a, a beautiful stepdaughter that I don't call a stepdaughter, uh, but I honor her mother and her dad, uh, who is my husband. Um, I get to, to participate in her life, and I have to ask the Lord to show me how to do that in a way that honors her and honors her parents. But I also have a 21-year-old daughter that I ask the Lord to teach me how to um, parent her as she navigates through adulthood. So... Um, the, just be open to the Lord teaching us about relationships. I'm going to pray, I promise you, but there's teaching at the beginning of each one of these because I want you to just hear the Father's heart, what he's saying about your situation. And sometimes our definition of family is based on our family of origin. That can be a good thing or that can be a bad thing. But when we ask the Lord, Lord, show me how to be a good family member, how to be a good family member in the body of Christ so that I am truly my brother's keeper, my sister's keeper, that I am um, concerned about what concerns my loved ones. Um, my church family, I fight you in the street over them because I love them. Um, now we have our own little quirks and, and as my um, brother Max said last night, none of us are perfect. We're, we're trying to figure it out, but but um, I pray for them daily and I pray for um, each of you and I'm adding you all to my roster because we're concerned about what goes on with you and God is concerned. And in the area of relationships, none of us, none of us, I know you big, bad, bold, can do it all by yourself. None of us was designed to exist just by ourselves. Um, he put us here. There are gifts and talents and resources and things that you have that come easy to you that I struggle with. So when I get to bless you with my gift or you bless me with your gift, that's the true working together of the body of Christ. One body with different parts, all different movements and different responsibilities, but we've got to come together and bring what we bring to the table so that the body, that the body is edified. And so allow God to teach you how to have healthy relationships the way that he intended. Even um, in your marriage relationships or just sisterhoods or family, church family or whatever, ask and invite God into those scenarios because you have a responsibility to be a good steward of each of them, okay? All right, uh, one last relationship, your pastors. I cannot say it enough. I love my pastors, but when I became a minister, it's like God dumped so much revelation knowledge onto me about pastors that I forever see them in a different light. I've always honored whoever my pastor was at the time. I wanted to be respectful because they, to me, were the voice of God. But one of the things that I think that as believers, we don't realize that when you sit under the leadership of a pastor, a man or a woman of God, your responsibility is to be obedient to the call of God on their life and to pray for them. They are flesh and blood. They're not Sally Super Saint. They're not, uh, they don't have a cape. They live it in this world just like we are. But the calling on their life is heavy. They keep watch over our souls. It is like however many people at your church, it's like they're the parents of 500 children um not that not that you they treat you like children but they watch over your soul you know when you're like oh gosh did, did I put anything in her lunch does he have oh god he gonna need some new shoes next week they're always thinking like that trying to anticipate what the body of Christ needs and to stay as watchmen on the wall to be hey don't 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 let the fox in here with these sheep because these these are my sheep they are protected um and, and also holding you up before the Lord. So um, treat them 
kindly. Ask the Lord to show you how to treat the man or the woman of God that he has placed you to be a sheep, to be a sheep under their shepherd over their leading and over their shepherding because it is a huge responsibility um, and so many of them do it with grace and with dignity and just never return evil for evil and don't act out the way that they could. Uh, yes, there's a few bad ones, but there's more good ones doing what the Lord wants them to do. So ask the Lord to give you a new awareness of your relationship with your pastor. Um, stop trying to keep everything from them. Stop trying to um, don't allow anyone to speak badly about them. Um, if you're still sitting under their pastorhood, uh, pastorship and, you, and, and people in the street talking crazy about your pastor and you ain't saying nothing, that's like somebody talking crazy about your mama. You, you cool with that? I, you, I can say she throwed off. You can't say that. <laughs> so, <it's> like, <laughs> so be protective of your pastors, your leaders, okay? All right, that's all I got. And we're going to go before the Lord in prayer about relationships. But we're learning together, okay? We are, we are learning together. No disrespect to anybody. We are learning together, okay? All right, so let's pray about relationships. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for this day of prayer. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters in Christ who are my co-laborers. Thank you, Father God, for all the men and women who are watchmen on the wall, God. Thank you for all the intercessors who are praying even now for everyone that is watching and everyone that will watch. God, we are excited about what you've done already. But God, here we come as empty pitchers before a full fountain, asking you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to create in us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within. Us. God, we want healthy relationships. God ordained opportunities, God, to, to be iron sharpening iron with the person or the persons that you have placed in our life. God, we want to be a good steward over our relationships, over our friendships, over our stewardship, over the, the people that you've placed us Father God, to be associated with. God, even from our family of origin, God, help us to be sensitive and to show grace in those areas, to not be judgmental, to not be negative, to not return evil for evil, God, but to just show grace and to show the love of Christ. Father God, even for those who are desiring a spouse, Father God, we at this moment lay down our list of what we want and we give you permission to bless us in any way that you desire. We want your perfect will for our life more than we want our own way. God, teach us how to be loving and lovable. Teach us how to be a friend that loves at all times. Think, teach us how to be a friend like you are, God. Teach us, Father God, how to not judge and how to be open and how to correct and love and how to be available to our friends. Thank you, Father God, for teaching us, God, how to handle every relationship that you place in our hands. God, I pray for our pastors. Oh, God, I pray for our pastors, oh God. I pray for our leaders and our spiritual teachers, God. The word of God says that they keep watch over our soul. So God, we hold them up before you right now. God, every man and woman of God who operates as a pastor or a spiritual leader or a spiritual mother or a spiritual nurturer, oh God. God, it is not an assignment to be taken lightly, God. So we hold them up before you, God, and we just ask you to breathe on them afresh. God, let us be slow to anger, quick to forgive. Let us be recklessly obedient, Father God, to your leading and your direction, oh God. Father God, your word declares that man looks at the outward appearance, but you look at the heart. God, look at the heart of the relationships of the people that of the people the hearts of the people who we are in relationship with God and give us revelation knowledge about how to handle them about how to to be good stewards God God we want 
your perfect will for every area of our life. God, we are done with offense. We're done with being touchy. We're done with being always wanting our way and not wanting to just be a blessing, to just pour out blessings upon our friends and upon our family and the people who are like family. God, we want to be loving and lovable. I hear you saying over and over again that love is not just what you do. It is who you are. You are a God who is love. That is your mantle and people will know us by the love that we share and by the love that we give. God, let us get none of your glory, but let us always give praise and honor that whenever we're being loving, we know that we are possessing the character of our Father. God, we are open. We are available. We give you permission to come in and to navigate every relationship that you've blessed us to be a good steward over. Now, Father, any relationship that we are involved in that is not of you, God, remove it from us as far as the east is from the west. We sever all ties with the enemy, all ties with negativity and chaos and confusion and drama. We are done with it in the name of Jesus, that we will be a people of peace, God, that our hearts will be in perfect peace, God, that we will go out in peace, that we will come in in peace, that we'll lie down in peace, that we'll rise up in peace, God, that peace will be our mantle. We thank you for it even now. God, and we give you glory. We give you honor. I thank you, Father God, for the praise reports that will come forward saying that all of the relationships in my life honor God. We thank you for it and we give you praise for it. God, we are open and available. Have your perfect will, have your way in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so that is our relationship prayer. I know why I start crying every time I pray about my um, pastors. I just love them and I just am so thankful for them. And I don't think I gave them honor earlier, but I give honor to my pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. And I thank them only because of them are we able to do something like this. Um, when the Lord put it on my heart and I emailed my pastor, she was like, go get it. So um, thank God for her and for Pastor Blanton and uh, for our overseer, Pastor Cesar Roland Richburg. And honor to all of your pastors and leaders and spiritual teachers as well. Um, we're so blessed to have them. You know, you can... It's nothing like having a pastor or pastors who, who keep watch over your soul and who really want the best for you. Um, and as you begin to learn more about that relationship, especially if you're believing God for a mate, um, my husband meeting my pastors was akin to him meeting my dad. I was like, if they say no, <laughs> may the Lord watch. <laughs> because I knew they were going to take it to to the Lord in prayer. And I know um, that whatever I ask them, they don't just say yes or no out of what they want, but that they take it to the Lord in prayer. So I thank God for them. I thank God for the relationships that are on the way in your life. Listen, any relationship that he takes from you, let it go because he's got something better for you. Remember the elevator? Bye-bye. They're they getting off. Bye-bye. We want to go higher in the Lord, all right? <laughs> We can't sit there all day with the door open. We got to go higher. So this next hour at the three o'clock hour, we're going to pray uh, specifically about um, strategy, about binding spirits of fear, canceling demonic plots and plans of the enemy. No more. No more mass shootings. No more um, fear-based initiatives. We decree and declare that there will be peace and we're going to draw a bloodline of hedge of protection around you, around where you live, your city, your state, uh, where your children live, every area. So we're going to do that at three o'clock, okay? I love y'all. Be blessed.